Hi everyone, my name is Lindsay. Thank you so much for joining me here today. I just got a quick uh, passage that I'd like to share with you from the Bible today. So let's dive right in. It's in Matthew chapter 5 verses 13 to 16. So let's read through that. So before I read it, I love to give you guys context. It's always super important to have context before you read anything. So um, what we're about to read is actually Jesus speaking. Um, this is part of what we call Jesus's Sermon on the Mount um, comes right after the Beatitudes. Um, yeah, so let's just jump into this. So he says, you are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. So Jesus, in this passage, he's speaking mostly to a crowd of Jewish people. Um, and so there's a few things that he says here that they're going to understand that relates to them specifically, especially when he says um, a city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. So he's talking to the Jews and, and they have a high value and a lot of symbolism around um, Jerusalem, which is a city that's set on a hill and it actually just shines in the setting sunlight. It's just a beautiful city. It has a long, rich history for them. And they would immediately think, yeah, Jerusalem, it's a city on a hill and you can't miss it. And so Jesus is telling these people in, in that particular verse, you guys are Jerusalem. You guys are placed in a position in the world. And he's speaking to Jews and, and we as Christians are an extension of who he is speaking to. So he's speaking to us as Christians now, as his disciples as well. He's saying to each one of us, each one of you out there, he's saying, you are a city on a hill. You are meant to be seen. You're meant to be taken notice of. You are meant to show the glory of God, right? Because Jerusalem was uh, symbolically also sort of showing God's glory by its its beauty and its, its depth of of meaning surrounding the Messiah, around Jesus and everything like this. And he says about the salt, you are the salt of the earth. What do we use salt for typically? Uh, we use it for flavoring things, right? We know that um, it's chemical structure and makeup. The crystals in the salt, they have um, chemical makeup that brings out the best of the flavors in any type of food that it puts it on, that we put it on. And so if you eat, you know, a meal that somebody makes and they don't put salt in it, it's going to be bland. It's going to be a bit boring, especially if you're used to eating a lot of salt like we do, especially in the Western countries. Um, but if you put salt on that meal, a good amount, not too much, so it just drowns in salt and all you can taste is like the ocean. Um, but if you put a proper amount of salt into a meal, it's going to make that meal, all of the flavors that are naturally there, it's just going to enhance them. And it's going to bring all those flavors out and it's going to make it really really tasty and enjoyable. And so God is saying, Jesus is telling each one of us, his disciples and all of these Jewish people who were following him around that time, he's saying, you are the salt that God has put on this earth to bring out the best flavors that the world has to offer, right? There is so much good that God has put into this earth in creation, in humanity. And yes, there's a lot of sin that has made this planet really horrible, but we can still see glimpses of God's goodness. And especially when we as Christians are representing God's character as best as possible, we are able to bring out the best of humanity, the best of God's creation into this world, and we can really show God's glory. And when people who aren't Christian, they see that, they're like, oh, this is really good stuff. Then they want to be introduced to Jesus because they're attracted to him through the goodness that they see, all the good flavors, all, all of this goodness that they can see of God through us that we're representing of him, right? And we see this metaphor once again, um, nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand and it gives light to all who are in the house. This is, this is all talking about our purpose as Christians, right? The purpose of a lamp, especially a lit lamp is to bring light to a room. 
okay? You don't want to light a lamp and then cover it. First of all, if it's a candle, it's going to snuff it out and that light will cease to exist. The fire will not have the oxygen that it needs to actually give light. But if it's under a basket, even if somehow it was managing to stay alight, it would be useless light because nobody else can see it, right? The purpose of a lamp, the purpose of a light is to bring that light to other people around it, right? It's supposed to bring out the bright, vibrant colors that are naturally in each object. When the light, when the photons hit an object and then that bounces off into our eyes, then we can see the colors that are in that object. Without the light, we cannot see the colors. So God is saying that you are the light. You're going to bring out the best colors of this world that I have naturally put into this. If you are fulfilling your purpose, people are going to see the goodness of God because of you. It says, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father in heaven. The purpose that God has given every single one of us is to glorify him. We are supposed to bring out the best flavors in this world. We are supposed to bring the light that shows the colors of the goodness of the things that God has placed in this world. And all of this, all of this goodness that we are meant to be seen, we are not supposed to be hidden Christians. We are meant to be living in the fullness that God has given us so we we can glorify him, right? Your purpose that God has given you is to glorify him and you need to be living up to that as best as possible. You can't be tasteless salt that does nothing. You cannot be a lamp that is hidden on a bas under a basket. You need to let your light shine. You need to let um, every part of your potential that God has placed in you, whether that means you're going to be a speaker or you're going to be a teacher or you're going to be whatever purpose that God has for you in life, you need to do that to the best of your ability. You need to um, take every opportunity that's presented to you and also go after opportunities that aren't being presented to you and, and make opportunities to share the gospel. You need to be doing the very best that you have with all the skills and the abilities that God has given you so that you can glorify him as best as possible. We see in the parable of the talents in a, in a different part of scripture that the person who was given more talents and they worked with that and they doubled their money. Um, talents was a, a form of currency, but we think of it as skills, which it also represents in that story. That person who who worked and they developed their skills and they developed and, and um, doubled their money in that way, they were praised by the master. And the person who chose not to develop their skills and not to um, make any sort of return on on um, the currency that they were given, the, the skills, the opportunities that they were given, the master who represents God was like, you're not using the opportunity I've given you and you're in trouble now, right? So God expects us as Christians, as followers of Jesus, as disciples, we cannot just be stagnant and sitting around or hiding under a basket or going, oh, I'm too scared to share the gospel or I just don't feel like it or I have other priorities or, you know, this new Netflix show has come out. I'm going to watch that instead of share the gospel. No, God expects us to use the time that we've been given wisely. He expects us to uh, to use the skills that he's given us and to develop them, to go to school, go to university, whatever it might be get a new skill, do a short course online, whatever it might be to actually become more useful in this world and to help other people see God's goodness. Okay, guys, this is my encouragement to you. Please go out, please make the best of whatever God has given you to do today and, and every day. Ask God, what what skills have you given me? What opportunities have you given me? If I, if I can't see them already, can you please show me what you expect from me? And he will answer if you ask in faith. That is all from me. Have a wonderful week. I'll see you guys again next Friday. Bye.